Okay, for well, here we are back on Miles' channel, Healthy, Crazy, Cool. And this is part two of me reacting to his video, I Let Freely Control My Diet for 24 Hours, The Frugivore Diet. And if you haven't seen part one, then definitely fly over there, check that one out first. I basically just watch Miles as he does the frugivore diet and I give my commentary, my feedback, and I'll probably put a link in the description below or tag it here somewhere. And this is part two where Miles puts in the food into chronometer. And I really do wish that Miles actually told me that he was going to do this because it was a video collaboration. We had a lot of detail back and forth over a little bit of time. So I would have expected him to tell me and I wish he did because, you know, then I could have given him exact this much of this, greens, et cetera. And I'm going to talk more about that because I didn't expect it to be like a nutritional analysis just for one day. You know, I thought it was just kind of a, you know, casual experiment, you know, kind of a bit of fun one day on the frugivore diet. But anyway, it's okay. We will get into that and I'll explain how it's not a deficient diet and everything is okay because that is basically the purpose of this video is to squash any fears that Miles may have or that any of you watching may have that the frugivore diet is deficient. All right, so let's get into it. Okay. So you plugged everything into chronometer. Here's a list of all of the foods I ate that day, not necessarily in order. 30 medjool dates. Okay, so I have to stop it on the dates because chronometer is not accurate when it comes to dates. It's prone to inaccuracies on other foods as well, but dates in particular, they do not have as much calories as chronometer says. And I've said this in previous videos before and over the years, okay, I average these dates, the big ones, to be around 50 calories each. So that really brings that down around 500 calories. So that's important to take note of that. And I would have told Miles that if he told me he's going to put it in here because the date it's like uh, probably best to be weighed, all right? Because I've seen them as sometimes as much as 80 calories each on the box or something. I'm like, no, 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 this is not right, okay? And this is my experience over the past 14 years, eating a lot of dates, right? One week I ate dates only, like over 400 dates. So I have a lot of experience with them. So, okay, just remember that. <laughs> remember that. There is inaccuracies here. It's important to remember that like, chronometer is like a bit of a, a rough guide and you can, it can be very inaccurate. And I have used it over the years basically to track mainly calories, but it can be an issue with that because like if I have a really sweet banana one day, then the calorie, the nutrient profile of that is going to be different. If I have like another ban banana that's grown differently, that's bland. That's going to come out totally different, but chronometer doesn't um, account for that, of course. Anyway, let's bag of frozen strawberries, the coconut water, the naked blueberry muffin fruit and nut bar. Okay, so the naked blueberry muffin fruit and nut bar. I didn't actually recommend that, and I totally understand. Like, I, I totally get it that Miles, you know, may not be able to find some things that I recommend. You know, that's always going to be an issue. I was hoping he could because he's, I believe, in a city, but that's not always going to be possible for him to get these date and coconut rolls. So that's what I actually recommended, the date and coconut rolls. And I think it's important to be objective and accurate here in the way of um, what I recommended should be put in here rather than what was actually eaten. And, you know, that would bring it to like more in line with what I'm recommending. So I did say coconut flesh, um, actual, you know, fresh coconuts. And I know that's a bit of a stretch. I was thinking maybe because he's in the city, he might be able to find fresh coconuts, you know, in these like kind of Asian stores, but he couldn't. So he had the, you know, coconut water that he bought. And there's also the alouette, sun-dried tomato and basil. I think that has some oil in it, which I don't recommend. So it kind of changes the whole profile, right, to some degree. So I actually put in what I did recommend into chronometer, you know, just to be accurate. And I, again, I get it, you know, he can't, you know, always find everything that I recommend and that is fine. But just going on what I put in here, I put that into chronometer and I also added some greens. We're going to talk about that very soon. Okay, let's go. 10 bananas, carob powder, nori sheets, a whole avocado, macadamia nuts, cucumber, carrots. Okay, so we can move on. Let's move on to more into the video. Forgot to add some small, a small bunch of grapes in. Okay, that's cool. According to Chronometer, I actually ate a lot more than freely recommended. Right, so when it comes to the calories, that's definitely inflated by Chronometer. So Miles actually had at least around 500 calories less than what it says here. So that's why when I sent him the video, I said it was around 1200 calories for the data raid because I estimated those dates. So 20 dates would be around 50 calories each and then a couple of hundred calories for the, the bag of strawberries. And this is a perfect way to start a day. Okay. It's 
packed with vitamin C, you've got a lot of berries in there. Because of the dates, it's going to be packed with polyphenols and it's going to be great for your immune system, for your gut microbiome. It's going to be probably about 1200 calories, I would say. So that, as you can see, that would have been quite accurate if we base it on 50 calories each. I can't believe like this chronometer, I'm not blaming Miles or anything like that, has 130 grams of net carbs for him. For someone with Miles' statistics, you know, like his height and his weight and his activity level, 130 grams is shocking. I was under the impression that because I was eating so many calories that everything, minerals, vitamins, micronutrients would all be covered. But looking at the minerals, they are, you need to know that they are. And all right, we're going to get into this because something you need to get about the RDAs, RDIs, whatever you like to call it, is that they are inflated. First up here, the calcium, the calcium is inflated. I think it's something like double um, what the World Health Organization recommends. You know, there's a lot of inaccuracies here. We will talk more about it. I think pretty good apart from the selenium, which could easily just be bumped up by having one macadamia, not macadamia, one Brazil nut and the zinc. Yeah. A tiny. Okay, so let's just have a look at this this quickly. The minerals look, you know, amazing in general there, right? But the calcium, like I said, bumped up. Dairy industry, huh? They got, they got their lobbying in there. You got to believe it. The lobbying is a real thing and it is very sad. It is affecting how we are recommended to eat. And you have to also realize that these RDAs are based on an omnivorous diet, on people who are eating animal bits and pieces, meat, dairy, and eggs. Okay, so it's going to be all out of whack in that regard. Okay, so the selenium is another one that has been inflated for meat and dairy purposes, basically. But you can just bump it up, like Miles said, with a Brazil nut, a single Brazil nut. So if you're worried, just have a Brazil nut, okay? I have to say, in my experience, after 14 years fruit-based and with excellent blood tests after 14 years or 13 and a half years, blood tests coming back excellent, no deficiencies, no like symptoms of selenium deficiency. I haven't had Brazil nuts. I've had, hardly had Brazil nuts at all. I might have them here and there, but definitely not every day. And I'm, I've got absolutely no symptoms of selenium deficiency. So don't worry. But if you do worry, just have a nut, have a single nut. The zinc is almost up there perfect anyway, but that's another one that has been bumped up by guess who? The meat and dairy industry. So you don't have to worry about that, even though that's almost perfect anyway. But I add in like this is based on like not measurements that I gave that were exact. Yeah. So with the breakdown that I put in, you can see that the um, zinc is no issue at all. But then you go to the sources, oysters, beef, turkey. That's what they put there as recommendations. So you can see, again, the meat industry influencing these RDAs. Vitamins all pretty good apart from B12, which obviously... Okay. Oh. Yeah, take a supplement for and vitamin D. Okay. Vitamins look amazing, of course, of course, because fruit. Fruit is full of the nutrition. It's full of the vitamins and minerals as well. So yeah, obviously B12, he is correct. And in his note, he said, you know, humans should be everybody. Yeah. Everybody should be supplementing with B12. Um, and I talk about that in other videos, vitamin D he's supplementing for that. And I would just be careful with that vitamin D supplementation. And maybe I will do a video on that in the future or talk more about it. Okay. So onto vitamin E, it is a non-issue. There is no problem at all with getting enough vitamin E on this lifestyle. And it's kind of crazy that they're even focusing on it. Actually, chronometer, I think usually has this hidden. You have to make it visible because look, it's virtually unheard of a vitamin E deficiency based on intake. I'm not getting enough fat. Okay. It's basically, it's usually attributed to some underlying cause absorption issues. So, and your absorption is increased. There's no um, absorption inhibitors on this lifestyle. Like you can eat a lot of food, but you may not be absorbing and assimilating it. Remember that. So this lifestyle is the best when it comes to absorption because it doesn't have inhibit inhibitors like iron blockers as well. So you need to remember that. Don't worry. Vitamin E is no issue. And I'll just show you here just to allay your fears. There is no problem. Okay. So I put in a basic whole foods day that I could have recommended to Miles, but I wanted it to be a bit more exciting, you know, with the sushi and everything like that. So I could have recommended this and this would be more optimal. As you can see, it's just like uh, bananas, mango, persimmon, some baby spinach, avocado, just one avocado, lettuce, and four Brazil nuts. So let's have a look at the vitamin E on this one. 
because I do recommend greens, nuts, and seeds. So I don't recommend just fruits, only fruits, even though it's going to be healthier than probably 99% of how people eat just eating fruits. I do recommend greens, nuts, and seeds. That's important to remember. So uh, there you go. The vitamin E is 43, 43 milligrams. So it's way over over that 15 milligram requirement. See, the mango in itself just covered it. If you just ate mango and almost just ate persimmon, you're going to get enough. But then we got some greens there, some avocado. Like you can see that the fruit is obviously, you know, you're eating the cal- a lot of calories from fruit. You're getting enough. You're getting enough. And I just want to have a look down here at the sources. Look at the sources. They recommend oils, oil seeds and vegetable oils, 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 right? That's first, first and foremost. And you know why? Because they want us to have lamp oil. They want us to get on the lamp oil because it's worth a lot of money. Basically, the veggie oil industry is something like, or it's projected to be in a couple of years, something like $130 billion per year. $130 billion. It's massive. It is massive. So the recommendations are going to be influencing those RDAs, just like meat and dairy has for a long, long time. Remember that, please. So as you can see, no issues with this lifestyle, even if you just had mangoes for the day. Guys, I ate almost four and a half thousand calories. I would have assumed that because I ate that much that everything would be covered, but in inex- Okay, so as we um, determined earlier, he did not eat as many calories as he thought he did. So because of the dates, the dates for sure. Um, and also, I didn't give him exact measurements. And also, again, this industry influence. We cannot deny this, okay? As you just saw, it's incredibly easy to get enough vitamin E. And it's also selenium, like that's one of them ones that is inflated. But if you really want to just have a Brazil nut, if you really want to cover that. Experiments in the past or whenever I've just tracked a random day um, and even when I've eaten a bit lower than this everything has been completely covered very very easily yeah and the, the problem with that though is that if you're covering it and it's actually um, too much okay over sufficiency is often issues of over sufficiency like conditions of over sufficiency are the ones that are generally killing people in this world like too much fat for instance people are dying from too much fat in their diet it's a huge issue. It's causing serious cardiovascular complications. So you have to remember that oversufficiency, just because you're getting more of something, it doesn't make it automatically better. That's very, very important. And that is very relevant when it comes to fat and protein in particular. That's because in terms of like vitamins and minerals, I consume huge amounts of greens. Yeah, well, I did actually think Miles was going to eat more greens because he is a big greens eater. So I kind of just left it with him. I didn't give him exact measurements. My bad. I didn't do that. But I did expect, I mean, I didn't know he was going to put in chronometer, but I did expect he would, you know, have more. But, you know, you're getting most of your vitamins and minerals from fruits on the fruit based diet and on any diet, actually. Fruits and greens are the number one source of vitamins and minerals on this earth for frugivores. Isn't that amazing? Like that is the way to eat. Like that's what the the diet obviously should be based on because that's where we're getting most of our nutrition, you know, not from the cooked processed foods, which have, you know, a lot of the vitamins being cooked out of them. Um, And there was some greens in this day, just, just not enough for me. Total carbohydrate. Oh, Miles, you should have had more, but like, I I know for the future, I know for the future that I'm going to provide exact measurements, you know, like it was at a time when it was monsoon, it was very hard for me to even get the video to miles, like it was, it was definitely a little bit of a distracted time and I didn't give exact measurements, but I will, I will in future. Um, Carbs, yes, baby, that's, that's almost a thousand grams, (laughs) that definitely has to be a record for me. Protein. That is great. That is great. That means he's going to have really full glycogen stores and like, yeah, just power. So protein. Okay. So the protein, 53 grams. Again, that is very low for me. Usually I'd probably get around 100 grams because I do include a lot of things like beans, legumes, tofu, the amino acid spectrum. And also protein powder. Um, Miles does also have protein powder. Um, So the protein, 53 grams. Okay, look, you do not want a lot of protein. And I know this goes against everything that you're probably being taught from birth. We need a lot of protein. We need a lot of amino acids. It's rubbish. Okay, it is rubbish and it's based on 
industry, you know, what the industry wants you to consume. And then it is influenced through lobbying into the RDAs. It infiltrates the RDAs. And then suddenly the population's eating way more protein than they need or then that is healthy. The dispassionate objectivity of scientists is a myth. No scientist is simply involved in the single-minded pursuit of truth. He or she is also engaged in the passionate pursuit of research, grants, and professional success. Uh, nutritionists may wish to attack malnutrition, but they also wish to earn their living in ways they find congenial. This inevitably encourages researchers to make a case for the importance of their own portion of the field and their nutrient, which was protein. So let's have a little bit of a look here. Um, these amino acids are actually easily covered. You know, even if you want to go by chronometer, you can easily cover this. And so I went in and I, let's, let's go back. So let's go to chronometer here. Um, let's have a look at this very simple day for a start. Seeing we're on this one, let's have a look right at the protein. Um, let's see what it comes up with. The very whole foods, very simple, you know, no like nut butters or extra like huge amounts of nuts. It's like four nuts or something like that. Um, there you go. I mean, that's great. Oh, like, look, if you want to put a little bit more green in there, everything is perfect. That is more than enough. I mean, perfect as in their standards. I don't agree with the, the dietary recommendations that are based on meat, dairy and eggs and uh, on industry lobbying. I don't agree with that. I don't push myself to try to eat like that as a plant-based eater because then you just end up having too much fat and too much protein. It's bad for your liver, your kidneys, your organs of elimination. It's just well, not good. So anyway, this day, this is the day that I recommended for miles plus like some measured greens. Okay. So arugula down here, I, you can even like take that down to 50 grams because miles at hundred grams and just Baby spinach, 250 grams, not hard to eat. A head of lettuce. A head of lettuce. Let's check it out because I do recommend greens, okay? And, um, you know, maybe I don't have exact measurements and sometimes it doesn't look like I eat a lot of greens. And that's true. Sometimes I don't eat greens in a day. I don't. But other times I'll eat a whole lot of greens one day. You know, so it just averages out. It's like with the, okay, I'm <laughs> talking a lot here, but let's go down. Um, there you go. All covered, right? It's all covered. We're no problem at all. Um, I mean, it's not a problem anyway. It's hard for me to communicate this because the industry has infiltrated the RDAs, the government. They are the government, these industries, basically. They're setting the standards for you. So you can see no problem at all with protein. And there was a massive recalculation of human protein requirements in the 1970s, which at the stroke of a pen closed the so-called protein gap and destroyed the theory of this pandemic of protein malnutrition. Infant protein requirements went from a recommended 13% of daily calories down to 10%, then 7 and then down to 5%. However, to this day, there are still those obsessing about protein. Those promoting paleolithic diets, for example, try to make the case for protein from an evolutionary perspective. Okay. So let's ask the question, what is the perfect food for human beings? The food that was fine-tuned just for us over millions of years to have the perfect amount of protein? Human breast milk. If high-quality protein was the nutrient among nutrients, helping us build our big brains over the last few million years, one would expect that importance to be resoundingly reflected in the composition of human breast milk, especially since infancy is the time of our most rapid growth. But this is patently not the case. Human breast milk is one of the lowest protein milks in the mammalian world. In fact, it may have the lowest protein concentration of any animal in the world. Less than 1% protein by weight. Trim is not fully covered. Lysine is quite low. I mean, excellent evidence of protein not being an issue is that there's not even a medical term for protein deficiency. Quashioka and marasmus are conditions of not enough calories. You know, the seen in like third world countries or something, not enough calories that is causing a protein issue. But you're going to see a whole lot of deficiencies if you're not eating enough calories. That's why I recommend eating enough food. 
There was a disease of malnutrition called kwashiorkor that was assumed to be caused by protein deficiency, uh, famously discovered by Dr. Cicely Williams, who spent the latter half of her life debunking the very condition that she first described. Turns out there's no real evidence of dietary protein deficiency. And if you're eating whole plant foods, yes, you are going to get enough protein if you eat enough calories, okay? It's important to just eat enough calories. But look, again, it's virtually unheard of in the whole entire world, but like it's just insane for the Western culture to be focusing on that. But we know why. We know why, right? Meat and dairy. They're in there with the funding. They are in there with their their influence on the RDA. So always remember that. Kwashioka and Marasmus are not anything you need to worry about. You need to worry about getting too much protein. That is a far bigger issue for people, far bigger issue. But of course, that doesn't suit the industry. Yeah, the fat, again, a lot lower than I would usually consume. Okay, so the fat is lower and that's a good thing. <laughs> I know Miles likes to have more fat. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but it is better not to have a high fat diet. There is a lot of research confirming this, that a high fat diet is not healthy. People are literally popping off from a high fat diet. Okay, like the here again, this is inflated. The um, the fat requirement is inflated, especially the omega-6 is just... It's just based on this meat dairy pushing, okay? Like omega-6 too. If you're going to get too much omega-6, then you're going to cause issues with your omega-3 because they, they compete for the same enzyme, omega-6 and omega-3 for conversion to like DHA. So the ratio of omega-6 to 3, 3 to 6 is meant to be more important than the actual amount. And I would say... Don't get too much omega-6, okay, because it is going to contribute to a lot of inflammation in the body and cardiovascular issues. So if we go back into what I put into the target here, uh, down to, there we go, 2.1, 1.6 over the omega-3, that is great, okay, there's no problem there, that is enough fat, it's just been pumped up again, and look, a way that you can confirm that that is actually true is that do your own research. Research how prevalent it is to have this fat deficiency. So one bit of evidence which is really quite compelling, right, is the fact that there is virtually, it's virtually unheard of to have a essential fatty acid deficiency. So why are they pushing it so much then? Why are they pushing it? Because the oil industry is worth $130 billion a year. That's why. It's just obviously not something we should be focused on. And I think one study showed there was a deficiency in some patients who were intravenously, intravenously fed this um, fat-free formula in hospital and they developed some issues. It's like, well, you're not going to get that problem because you're having whole foods, you know, whole fruits from nature that have the perfect ratio, that have that balance for for you, and you have a variety over the course of day, week, years. So it always should be assessed over the course of time. So, but even then, there's virtually no such thing as essential fatty acid deficiency. So we should be um, focusing on the oversufficiency, not deficiency. So just to round up and a few things I want to point out from the day, I actually really enjoyed it again because I just love sweet fruit. I'm so happy to hear that and he really did the day justice. I think he did a fantastic job. He made all the food look amazing and like I've actually had like a whole lot of um some of you actually on Instagram tagging me in strawberry daterade recipes. And I think that's fantastic. And I would say that Miles has had, has had something to do with that. So that is great. And when, when I give this feedback, it's not anything personal against Miles or anything like that. I just want to show you that this diet is not deficient. We've been led astray by this industry influenced, you know, recommendations. Okay. Uh, firstly, and also I want to say more, more evidence of the RDAs being in influenced by industry is, um, look here. Can you believe they have a cholesterol RDA? They literally have a cholesterol RDA. It's like, yeah, cholesterol is found in animal foods such as meat and eggs, but your body actually, like they're saying, go organic has cholesterol. Um, so <laughs> 
cholesterol is no issue at all because your body creates it, your liver creates it. We have no need to ingest cholesterol and it's actually dangerous. So you can see how meat and dairy is in there again, influencing the data. Guys, that day trade, it tasted absolutely incredible. And I've said that I love to start the day with a lot of fresh fruit. And usually I do, you'll see in all of my videos, I can eat a huge whole watermelon. Again, if I have mangoes, I can eat 10. Um, if it's grapes, I that's great. I would like to see him eating 10 mangoes. I'm supportive of that. It's wonderful for your health too. I need boxes and boxes and boxes and I feel fine. In fact, I'm thriving when I eat the whole fruit. Obviously dates are such a condensed source of sugar, good sugar, of course, but 20 of them blended into a jar, which I gulped down very, very quickly. Okay. So gulping it down very, very quickly, you know, I'm not going to recommend that. Okay. Because you do need to chew your food. That is important. Um, so definitely have it at a reasonable rate. Again, with a whole bag of strawberries, as much as I enjoyed it, I did have a crash afterwards that I've never experienced before after eating fruit. And I actually felt like I had to take a little nap. Again, that doesn't happen when I consume the whole fresh fruit. Okay. So I'm not really, you know, sure exactly of this experience because I haven't heard of it, of people who are doing raw to four or frugivore diet. It hasn't been something that has come into my radar. So I'm thinking this could have to do with the fact that either because Miles drank it really, really quickly. It does still have a lot of fiber in it though. Dates are very high in fiber, but there is water added. Um, so this isn't like a common experience, but it could have to do with he does have a high fat diet and he says that himself. Okay. So that can also influence the sugar going into the cell because the fat can line insulin receptor sites. And you need to remember that. Okay. That can influence like that meal that you have before, even the night before can influence how that, how your fruit is digesting. And that's part of why I recommend the low fat diet because that's what is reflected in nature. That's how we would be eating. We wouldn't be eating a high fat diet. So yeah, I recommend that, you know, Miles, all he has to do really is lower the fat intake and that is going to digest better. Um, or else maybe you're just, he drank it really too fast or maybe naturally, you know, it was a lot of calorie. I mean, it was a good calorie hit, not a lot, like it was a good calorie hit and he just needed to have a rest after it. It is natural for animals to rest after they eat. So don't ever feel guilty about having a rest. Okay. That is totally, totally fine. But yeah, it's not a common experience. And so don't be afraid to have your data raid. You know, I've been promoting it for over a decade. So I have a lot of experience with it. And I was having 400 dates. I have 400 dates um, in a week once and I never had any crashes. So yeah, I think for those reasons mentioned that maybe that is what happened with him. And eat it at, I guess, a regular pace. Because again, with that, it was yeah. 20 condensed large. But I, I am definitely supportive of what he said of having the whole fruit for sure that is the best i mean you're having the whole fruit with a date but i mean eating it is obviously optimal that is the best but you can get in more calories sometimes if you have smoothies so you know you got to also focus on if you're not getting enough calories it's better to get it in through a smoothie than not schedule dates which i gulp down in under five minutes so you don't have to hit a hundred percent of all of your macro yeah. or micronutrient targets every day like freely said even on the frugivore diet day-to-day -day things can differ yes there you go so day the say that's important day-to-day -day things can differ you know, after all we've said, you know, the industry influence and all of that stuff, like still day to day. I mean, some days I go and eat like at raw cafes and I get a, a whole lot more fat than I usually would, but it still uh, balances out to around 10% of less or less of calories that I get over the course of a week or months. You know, it still balances out because that's how I feel best. And that is what is reflected in nature. So yeah, just remember every day is different on the frugivore diet. That's why I said it in the video. And, you know, we should never just look at one day as the diet is deficient, you know, because that's, that's ridiculous. Some people just fast for the day. Obviously they get nothing and they're still fine, but yeah, you, you got no problem on this lifestyle. It is amazing. Um, I'm probably going to leave it there. I think Miles did a great job. He did amazing. Like he made the fruit, the food look incredible and overall it was a very positive experience and as you can see i've shown easily that the lifestyle of the diet is sufficient and healthy and it's not over sufficient you got to be careful these conditions of over sufficiency are 
killing people all over the place more than insufficiency. Your health status needs to be determined over the course of, you know, months and years, not a single day. And you can see from my excellent blood test, you know, a lot of people don't have blood tests up. I want to see more blood tests, but like, I, um, as you can see, have like no issues, no like symptoms of deficiencies or anything like that or oversufficiency. I'm just feeling my best and things are going great. And there's a lot of people also on the lifestyle doing great. So don't have any fear. Jump on board. It is a fantastic, abundant lifestyle. And remember the industry influence. Supplement industry is worth hundreds of billions of dollars a year. And they are going to try and get you on their essential fatty acid supplements and their protein powders and, you know, all of these things they are trying to push. The industry is trying to push on us that we don't need. We don't need to eat your lamp oil. Keep your lamp oil. We do not want it. You know, we want whole foods, whole foods, whole foods, real food. Bring it back. Right. Anyway, so that's my video for today. Don't forget to go for it yourself and I will talk to you soon.